Across the globe, there are places which aspire to provide the most exclusive of holiday experiences. Luxurious. What I am doing is the best you can get in the moment. Adventurous. Oh my God, lions, oh my goodness. And sometimes quirky. He is one of the most famous guests and he has a fan club. He has an Instagram of over 10,000 followers. But what challenges do these hotels face and how do they strive to be a top destination? Anybody could have bricks and mortar in the right location, but in order to stay relevant, I do think it's important to innovate. With exclusive access, we go behind the scenes. All right, now let me take you to one of our specialty suites. Following the staff who work around the clock. Guys, we need to be fast, yeah? The guest is waiting. To deliver to their guests whatever it takes to impress. When you go from one room to the other, you go into another piece of art. You notice the view is like no other in the world. All our guests love fantasy and happiness. We take care of every guest and make them feel like kings. From Asia to Arizona, Kenya to the Caribbean, Dubai to India. Step behind the scenes of some of the world's most incredible hotels. Africa is one of the most untouched destinations in the world, providing visitors with the chance to experience extreme sports, food, culture and an abundance of wildlife. Their locations are so unique that visitors travel from across the globe to stay in them. In Kenya, how does a tented hotel in the Masai Mara achieve five-star luxury in the middle of the wilderness? When you come to Angamamara, you'll notice the view is like no other in the world. And in Cape Town, South Africa, a hotel with two very different personalities. In the marina rise, you're getting the urban side of our resort, and on the island, you're getting the luxury, quiet time out as if you were on a beach resort, but you just happen to be in the middle of a city. In this buzzing cosmopolitan city, how do they offer their guests a break from their hectic lives? Thousands of people travel to Africa for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of seeing animals such as lions and elephants in the wild. Perched on a mountaintop, offering perfect views of the wildlife and landscape below, is the Angamamara. It's so discreet, it's almost invisible to the eye. It is important, especially for the guests, not to have, you know, some big, gross-looking building behind your photograph of a giraffe, for example. The location in the vast plains of the Masai Mara is so remote, guests must fly in by small plane to the resort's private runway. These camouflage tents are the only accommodation here, and guests pay a premium for them, starting at around £950 per night. The hotel's 24-hour-a-day policy of guests choosing what they want, whenever they want it, is part of this hotel's appeal. It's October and the wildebeest migration season as they cross the river from Tanzania to Kenya. People want to visit at this time of year as the wildlife is out in full force. A busy Mara makes for a busy hotel. In charge of the operations here is General Manager Azi Lago. Angama Mara has given the guests something different in terms of the safari experience. It's about the animals, yes, but also about a holiday. So we try to make sure that we tailor your holiday to be your holiday. So you'll tell us what you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. And we'll tailor everything about your stay uh, to that. 
It's this policy that's keeping things busy at the hotel today. Tour guide Alice is heading down into the Mara to scout where the animals are for today's safari, while head butler James Adera is coordinating a very special treat for some of their guests. One of the things I do here as the head butler is to organize these uh, out of Africa uh, picnics. It means to be for two peoples. Uh, it's like a romantic kind of a bush picnic lunch. So it's really nice and it's a very nice place whereby you can see uh, down bottom of the Masai Mara and you can see the Mara River down below. That's a matter of having things organized very nice in front of the guests. James instructs his colleagues on what to do to get the picnic site ready. The picnic is kept within the hotel's grounds, which total 700 acres of wilderness, so they have to plan everything carefully. Despite it being only 10 a.m., the hotel's kitchens are already busy preparing the lunch. Okay, I've got fruits. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, medium rare mm -hmm. beef mm -hmm. and uh, chocolate brownie. Thank you, Chef. Welcome. We'll see you later. I hope the guests will enjoy this. Thank you. Okay, now I've got the food from the kitchen. So, and we're going to meet there, guys, up in the hill, They're preparing for some boxes. The picnic takes place in a location where the movie Out of Africa was filmed. James's colleagues are making their way up the steep hill to the picnic site. The view may be special from the top, but with just the two of them, they have their work cut out if they're going to get it ready in time. It's a really busy day, and to top it off, new guests have just landed onto one of the airstrips. Azzy has called a staff meeting. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Brief. Uh, Stacey will arrive Safari Link at 15.45 from Angamamara, and uh, she would like to do a nature walk today. I hope, Dan, that's okay with you? That's fine. Uh, tomorrow, uh, please note she has... It's a hectic time at the hotel, but there will be no rest for the staff as a big event is planned. For delights, barbecue for the whole lodge. Uh, I think we have 14 guests today. Uh, that's what we have for today. So have a great day delighting our guests. Asante ni sana. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then Bila kongalea... Say to me, Maliza. <laughs> the new guests have a short drive to the hotel up the mountain, but it's not your usual airport transfer, as they put on a mini safari. Hotel's runway, Fred Sinoni, a naturalist from the local Maasai village, is employed by the hotel to look after the area around the airfield. We receive guests or, uh, from board airstrips, uh, but uh, I really love this airstrip because it's close home. So we got quite a very interesting uh, natural habitat up here, uh, looking at the on the left side of the airstrip, we've got a pretty nice uh, acacia woodland, and this is exactly what attracts the giraffes to come here, because the acacia trees are very delicious and nutritious. It's also a very nice place for the local people to graze their cows, and it is because we are situated outside the reserve, so the local people come up to graze their cows, and it is slightly safer, because not a lot of predators do come up here. 
Today, the very wildlife guests are hoping to see are causing a bit of a problem for him. There are quite a lot of animals, especially in the morning hours when we're expecting guests to arrive. Uh, we need to come up very early, uh, pretty in advance to clear the runway. And some of these animals are very stubborn. They're used to people, they're used to cars. It is really a very difficult job because uh, we're living in a wild environment. Fred may be used to dealing with the animals, but guests are arriving and the runway needs to be cleared quickly. Cape Town, a city that is said to have it all. A busy metropolis that also has beautiful beaches, stunning landscapes, famous landmarks, great food, and of course, being in South Africa, fantastic wine. We're definitely blessed that we are called the Rainbow Nation. We have 11 official languages, 11 official cultures. It also helps us to be dynamic in, in innovating uh, different things for our guests. This is a hotel with two different sides. In the marina rise, you're getting the urban side of our resort, and on the island, you're getting the luxury, quiet um, time out as if you were on a beach resort, but you just happen to be in the middle of a city. With a starting price of just over £3,500 per night, the Table Mountain Suite at the one and only Cape Town is one of the hotel's most prestigious and expensive rooms. Guests choose this suite because of its incredible view of Cape Town's most famous landmark, Table Mountain. It also comes with other perks. Today, the hotel's butler is preparing a champagne breakfast on the balcony. Marinda Doppergita, the hotel's guest relations manager, makes sure the room is always close to perfection. I would like to introduce you to our most exclusive suite that we have here in the hotel. So the private lounge leads into the dining area over here where the butler um, prepares meals and where we spoil the guests throughout with breakfast as you can see at the moment, which has an overlooking um, view of Table Mountain area. This is a very preferred um, luxurious room as you can see over here where we have um, one beautiful um, king size bedroom. Guests who choose to stay here expect the full-on VIP treatment. The suite has its own kitchen with the option of having a personal chef, a 12-seater dining room and its own gym. The view from the bathtub isn't bad either. So just imagine yourself um, in this bathtub looking at the incredible view. What a romantic, romantic view it is. And now I would like to take you outside one more time. That is really the highlight of, of any guest staying with us in Cape Town. From the exterior, this hotel looks like any other in the city centre. But what's hiding behind it offers guests tranquility not usually found in this kind of location. The resort is split into two different stay experiences. So we have the Marina Rise, which is 91 of our bedrooms, all facing towards Table Mountain. And then we have an island, which has 40 rooms and suites with a beautiful room flow pool in the centre, very resort style. The hotel's outdoor pool, poolside restaurant, and spa are also here. Welcome to the canal at the waterfront. Thank you. You stand up paddleboarding. These guests are choosing to make the most of this unique feature of the hotel. All right, so that's your paddle height. So I'm going to put you guys straight on the board, standing up. The boards are nice and stable. It's a far cry from the busy city.
There's even a hop-on, hop-off tour boat that takes you around the marina. Back in Kenya, and 1,000 feet below the Angamamara Hotel, the tour guide Alice is scouting for animals. With the Mara being over 500 square miles, it's no easy feat. The whole of this area that you can see, as far as your eyes can see, that's the Mara. It's incredible that the wildebeest are all over here now, because like a week ago when I went home, they were not here yet. The landscape, um, the wildlife, I really like it during the, the migration, although most people don't really like it because it's much crowded in the Mara, but not really crowded because we still have a very big area where you can uh, drive and not see a single truck. So it's incredible, I, I like it. Alice is one of only a few female safari guides employed in the Mara and has been taking guests out on guided tours since the hotel opened. In the beginning it was very, something very unusual, even for the society and especially coming from the Maasai community where a woman being a driver, it's something like, ooh, uh, they will regard it as, uh, they will regard it as, uh, it as a, a male-dominated industry and they take it as a man's job. Have two ladies, which is in itself a rarity in this part of the Mara. Uh, the fact that they are Maasai makes it even more special, and Alice is one of our guides, and she's one of the favorites with all our guests. Ready smile, a lot of local knowledge, upbeat, passionate about what she does, and a big inspiration to all the ladies in the Mara. Oh my God, lions, oh my goodness. Oh, look. Oh. oh, I didn't expect to see them here. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, this is unbelievable. Oh my God, they're so full. She's ready to wake up every day and be out there with the big boys, with her big jeep, making sure that you get to see what the Mara has to offer. This is really unusual because at this time of the day and they're sitting down, it's really incredible. We're very lucky. Back at the hotel, James is on his way to the picnic site. He doesn't have long before the guests arrive. He's hoping that his colleagues have made good progress. So even from here, you can start seeing the, uh, some of the boxes and the utility guys, people arranging the uh, boxes. And here we are. All right. Please put. So now we are arranging these things here. James is one of the many people from the local community employed at the hotel. I'm born and bred here in the Mara, but it seems like every single morning is like a new thing for me. I never be bored of this. It's really nice because every morning you, you see something different. Either you see the balloons flowing down or you see the animals that you haven't seen for quite a few days. And it's really, really nice. I like the place, it's fantastic. With James's picnic guests enjoying the view, it's now up to Alice to ensure she knows exactly where the animals are, so her guests get what they've paid for. Most of our guests who visit the Mara are coming here because of the animal, the wildlife. Uh, we have the big five animals, which everybody wants to see, and being seeing them here in the wild, in the Mara is a treat for everybody. We'll be having four species of animals in the same picture. 
is giraffe, zebra and wildebeest, and elephant is joining also. At the Mara, as we always say, always deliver. We call it Mara drama. Day in, day out. Uh, whether it is the small animals you're looking for, the large animals, there's always something to see. They're out in full force every day of the year. Hotels are often famous for their food and drink, and that's the case here in South Africa. But it's something a little bit different on the menu at the one and only Cape Town that has attracted the attention of guests who check in here. Kyle Hickman has been working in the kitchens as a pastry chef for over five years. I firmly believe that sugar creates joy and pastries create joy, and so I like to incorporated in almost every aspect of the hotel and you'll stay at the hotel. So I strongly believe that sweets bring out your childhood memories. So especially when you start eating something that you used to eat as a child and you maybe stop because life got too stressful and people started telling you sugar was bad for you. Today is an especially busy day for Kyle. He has to leave in an hour for a flight to Rwanda to visit a new property within the hotel group. There's lots to do, and a guest has just booked a champagne picnic tour up Table Mountain. He'll need to delegate if he's going to make his flight. Jamie, don't you just want to make sure that these are portioned the right size, please? Thanks to Kyle's passion, this hotel has become famous for its selection of sweet treats. From our breakfast breads, our croissants, to all our afternoon tea items, the chocolates that we put in the rooms for turndown, um, for arrival amenities, all our garnishes. Everything made in-house. Um, and a lot to do with bakery is preparation and is made the day before. So all our danishes, our muffin mixes, our croissants. Rubin's is one of four restaurants at this hotel and has a reputation for its sweet offerings, even at breakfast. It's a demanding time in the kitchen. Robin Whitehead is the food and beverage manager and has provided behind the scenes access to the kitchen operations. We're about to head into our main uh, hot kitchen. This kitchen services three of our main outlets here at the hotel, being the Vista Bar, Ruben's all-day dining restaurant, as well as our in-room dining functions. It is the main hot kitchen in the hotel. As you can see, we've got a lot of people that are busy at work here. We currently staff about 127 uh, staff at the moment. Going into our festive season, we'll crack the night of about 170 people in total, just in one department, all working together to make the guest experience, nothing short of magical. Whilst his colleague preps the hamper for the Table Mountain picnic, Kyle has to make 100 croissants from scratch. If you can show me the pastry chef that does this by hand, for these quantities, I'd be impressed. <laughs> allowed to tap into our creativity because we don't have those sort of boundaries and those silos uh, restricting us. It carries through the entire hotel. So, I mean, we talk about the creativity for pastry chefs and chefs in general, but it doesn't just stop it there. It's, uh, there's creativity needed in every aspect of guest interaction and everything we offer for our guests. So whether it's the experience they get in the room, whether it's uh, the, the cocktail that's offered at the bar, um, what's served in the mini bar or the welcome amenities, it all comes down to creativity and, and how much you can think out of the box and how much you can think of what a guest actually wants. So Kuti, do you want to come help me shape you? I think you started off in Hot Kitchen, right? Yes. And then we brought you over to Pastry a couple of years ago. It's Kuti's passionate about pastry and it shows in her work. At the moment we're not too busy so we're going through how many would you say Kuti? About, about 140. Yeah about 140 but in season we go up to 300, 350 a day. Back at the Angama Mara and these arrivals have finally made their way to the hotel. It's unusual in that it doesn't actually have a check-in desk 
and is split into two camps, the north and south. When guests arrive at either camp, they get whisked straight into the camp's bar and restaurant so they can admire the view. It's a clever tool that the hotel uses to instantly wow them. From here, they make their way through the bush to their tent. There are no upgrades here. Every one of the 30 is identical. Each of the tents has a frontage, glass frontage of about 12 meters. Every tent looking out onto the Mara without anybody looking into the tent. And that gives you total privacy. You can keep your blinds up, enjoy the stars at night, enjoy the view during the day, uh, enjoy your view from your deck. Uh, these particular tents, each of them, has a king-size bed, they have a freestanding bathtub, they also have a shower. The shower is indoors, but can actually open uh, the front of the, of the tent to have it actually as an outdoor shower, which makes it adventurous. <laughs> There are over 100 other lodges in the Mara, so to stand out from the norm, this hotel has taken a unique perspective on its furnishings. Generally, when you look at uh, you know, all the fixtures and fittings uh, within the lodge, uh, the few points like uh, our handles, for example, they are all uh, woven with string, coloured string, and those colours that we choose are normally uh, looked at from the Maasai perspective and also from the African perspective. So that you'll find a lot of blue and red, which are proudly Maasai colours, but also you'll find copper uh, being an African colour, something that we use and used a lot in the African continent. The hotel employs women from the local Maasai tribal village who make many of the traditional interior design objects. These women, known as the Maasai Mamas, are on their way to work. The ladies, they're from community, they're from around here, and they don't stay in the lodge, but they, they began with the lodge when it opened because they, they were doing the handles for the lodge. And uh, we work with them because we want to, to be connected with the community. And being connected with the community means that we get some people from around here. They come and they work here, and then they, they do things for the Ngama, and then they get something for themselves as well, because at the end of the month, they're paid salary as well. So at least we make sure they get something for themselves as they work for the lodge from the community. Mary, or Mama Mary, as she's known, runs the hotel's gift shop where the ladies work. The hotel hopes their influencers help to add authenticity whilst maintaining a five-star feel. You'd go and you'd find our uniforms, for example, shockingly red, which is not something that you'd find in any other safari lodge, because we normally use the beige, white, khaki colours, uh, but here we use all the bold colours, and you'd find it all over in your tent, you'd find it, uh, the dividers that we use, the lounges that we use outside on the deck, at the swimming pool, you'll find bold red, and all those colours really strike the eye, but makes it again outstanding. Mary, uh, taking care of the shop, she brings different perspective uh, to, uh, you know, commercial uh, safari shops, uh, in that she has taken and adopted all these Maasai mamas doing the bedwork, uh, putting them as part of her little group, bringing them together from different villages, uh, coming together and forming one strong team. Elsewhere in the hotel, some guests have chosen not to venture out into the wilderness today, but are enjoying the comforts of the facilities. It is, you know, just letting your hair down. So everybody, once they're on a holiday, just wants to say, this is it. I just want to let everything down. When I go back to work, I feel like I've actually relaxed. 
these guests have asked the hotel to organise them a safari of a different kind. It offers a unique view of the Mara and its wildlife, if they can get it in the air. The Mara, you're able to do other activities, uh, to see wildlife from a different perspective. Uh, going up in a hot air balloon, the perspective from up there is a totally different experience from what you have on the ground. For guests staying at the hotel, ground safaris are included in their stay. But this hot air balloon experience is extra, costing around £400 per person. Seeing the animals from above, just seeing the landscape, as far as I can see, open lands, different animals, different vegetations, is a spectacle that everybody, again, should experience at least once in their lifetime. On the ground, a team of chefs and caterers have gone ahead to site to set up a breakfast spread for when the balloon safari has finished. Cooking up a luxury champagne breakfast is no easy feat when you're in the middle of the wilderness. But they've been imaginative. Pancakes are being made on burners from retired air balloons. Transported from hot air balloon to the picnic site in a jeep, the guests arrive just in time for the champagne to be poured <sighs> and the breakfast to be served. The champagne station is now a gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> It's an experience dining in the wilderness. Yeah, once, a, once a year, we got to put up a mother daughter photo. <laughs> South Africa is famous for its wines, so visitors to the restaurant in the one and only Cape Town expect to be able to pick from the best of the local vintage. The staff here hope their wine loft, with over 500 varieties, can cater to every taste and budget. This is a pinotage. Uh, a pinotage the hotel's a head wine price. sommelier, Luvo and Dezo, uh, is heading out to one of the region's most famous vineyards. Also very nice blackberry structure. Really good for food as well. A group of guests have booked a wine tasting event and it's nearly a two hour drive. We are in Stellenbosch, which is one of the country's most famous uh, wine estates that is known for a, a variety of different wines. One of the reasons a guest comes to Cape Town, and particularly at the one and only Cape Town, uh, is the wine tasting experience that we do. We offer a trip out to the winelands, normally with our head sommelier Luvo and Tezo. Luvo will take guests behind the scenes, introduce wonderful winemakers, so it's a unique experience with someone who lives wine. Greetings guys and please welcome to Simon Sir. Um, it's been a very beautiful day and uh, everybody feel free to grab a seat and we're going to be starting with um, a beautiful wine. Um, right here, which I'd like all of you to try. Uh, this is the Simon Sir Capsa It's a 2016 vintage. It's South Africa's very first champagne style. 
and we'll get to understand what makes this so unique. Well, I'm not going to be observing. I'm going to be having some as well. May you I? Certainly, please do. I can see myself on a hot summer's day with some food in this bottle. Indeed. Yeah. Do you guys like it? Awesome. It's not just the tasting event that has brought Luvo here today. This vineyard also produces the hotel's very own Brut. Over 4,000 bottles are produced for them every year. Right now, we are at a Chardonnay block, a block that gives us that one and only brut. And um, it's a block that gives sort of more um, your, your green apple, it gives freshness in fruit and structure and complexity. And it's a very nicely laid out block. There's, there's about almost just over two meters between each rows. And the fruit here has really been very amazing and consistent each year. The brute made here is distributed throughout the hotel and is available in the bars, restaurants and for room service. Thankfully, today's delivery is already on its way. Over 3,000 miles north of Cape Town in Kenya, head butler James's eventful day continues. He's now preparing for tonight's event that sees 14 guests from both the North and South Camp come together. It's James's job to coordinate everything. We do like a family style, like a family style table whereby people from North Camp or the guests from North Camp and guests from South Camp will mix up together and have dinner together and chat and all that. Laying out a five-star dinner service in the middle of the bush has its challenges, but James is used to organising his team. It's the finishing touches that he hopes will turn this remote location into something quite special. We are really set up. We got everything we needed for the preparations, and we're just waiting for the chefs to come, and then we'll uh, they will uh, start uh, doing the barbecue thing. Each camp only has one restaurant, so the hotel puts on events like this to wow their guests. With their arrival imminent, the chefs are called upon to begin preparations. These chefs are used to cooking in the middle of nature. The guests from both the North and South camps have arrived, but James's day has not yet finished. Yeah, this is um, gin and tonic, oh, so no. please don't so drink. Please. <laughs> right, please enjoy your drinks and then okay, see, it's just for food. Thank you. Enjoy. Is everything okay? Yeah. That's good. Please enjoy yourself. And uh, we'll see you later. Are you in charge of the uh, barbecue? Uh, sort of. <laughs> it's been a busy time for James, but the guests seem happy. Incredible. Well done. Well done. Well done. Back at the one and only Cape Town, for guests who don't want to venture outside, the hotel brings a little bit of history and South African culture to them. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> the in-house high-end boutique Neo stocks jewellery made by Charmaine Taylor. Thank you very much. Thank you. What stock you have? 
Germain's collection was introduced to us two years ago and just because of the talking point of the history behind it and just saying the name Nelson Mandela like sparks a memory in everybody's mind. She's turned pieces of fencing from Robin Island, where Nelson Mandela was held captive for 18 years, into jewellery. It's a popular draw for the hotel. Today, she's paying them a visit to check on stock. So when people from abroad come, it's always like, oh, I can take this piece home with me. So it's more of a personal thing. I can take a bit of Nelson Mandela home with me. Nice selection, actually. These are all the jewelries that are made by Shaman Taylor, okay. uh, by the brand Legacy Collection. So where this comes from is that it's made of the Robben Island fencing in which Nelson Mandela was incarcerated in. Amazing. So special pieces, 100%. So all these brown pieces over here are part of the Robben Island fencing. The one and only, they started stocking me in 2013. So they were one of my first retailers, so they're one of my favourites. And they've, yeah, they've been great. And they've got such a beautiful store. They're always looking after the jewellery. Everything about it is, uh, yeah, it's always polished, always, yeah, the shelves are always looking great. What would I say to Nelson Mandela if I had to see him? Uh, it's quite an interesting thing, I think, what Zelda Lagrange said, that every, every single person that saw Nelson Mandela got emotional. I can tell I'm getting emotional now. Just, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the freedom and, yeah, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Not a fault show that. After a frantic morning, things have finally begun to calm down at the hotel. Kyle is on his way to the airport to fly to their sister hotel in Rwanda. Which has left chef Kaluta Muna to put the finishing touches together for today's luxury Table Mountain picnic excursion. Table Mountain is one of the new natural wonders of the world, so it is very much loved by all Cape Tonians, and I would recommend to any guests going, make sure you head up the mountain on your first clear day because the tablecloth does come over. The weather changes frequently up the mountain, and yesterday they were turned away because of poor visibility. They're hoping they have better luck today. At the resort, we will prepare a wonderful picnic for you to take up the mountain on the cable car, and you get a beautiful aerial view of the entire city, 360 degrees. They've made it and are finally making their way up. Over 800,000 people visit this famous landmark every year, but not many get to experience it in this way. Africa is a vast canvas of natural beauty, wildlife and culture and visitors who holiday here are spoiled for choice. In Kenya, the Agma Mara has used its remote location to its advantage. By offering a rare wilderness experience, the hotel has ensured that guests look way beyond the simple aesthetics of the accommodation and leave feeling like they've had a once-in-a-lifetime experience. They want you as a guest to experience the best that the Mara can give. Being the eighth one of the world, of course, this is part of what uh, we're giving you as a guest when you come to the Mara. And in Cape Town, by offering a unique resort-style experience right in the middle of a vibrant city, the one and only delivers the best of urban living wrapped up in luxury. Cape Town has for many years been voted uh, one of the top destination cities to visit. It's a small city, which makes getting around really, really easy, um, but it's very much a lifestyle city. In South Africa, we have 11 national languages, officially, um, so you get to experience a melting pot of cultures. I think our location, our service, amazing space in a phenomenal city. <laughs> 